Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. And before we do that, I would like to thank our sponsor, and our sponsor is you. You have done a wonderful job of keeping this channel afloat through Patreon, PayPal, uh, Tip Jar, and so on. So if you would like to do that toward the end of the video, there is a slide that shows uh, where to go, or you can just go to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now, uh, our question today comes through Andrew Vaziri. Okay, and he has a question which I've sort of boiled down into this. He looks at a trapped dipole, okay? The traps act as electrical switches, uh, electronic, I should say, maybe electrical. Um, because of the reactance changes with frequency, a signal of high frequency cannot go past the first set of traps. A lower frequency can go past that into the second set of traps, and so on. His question is very simple. Instead of having lossy traps like that, why not put relays or switches right at those points? And you can switch in and out the parts of the antenna that you want to use. Now, this idea is essentially how a trapped uh, dipole or vertical works, but it's an active uh, form of switching, doing something like that. Now, um, the question is, where do you get RF switches that can handle that? And the answer is, they are readily available. You have to look for them. Uh, you can buy these uh, RF switches, sometimes called RF relays. Uh, you have to kind of dig for them, but you can find them. Okay, you will find that they are more expensive than building a trap. Now, the question is, how do you address the switches so that when you put a voltage on the line or whatever, the correct switches will close. Here's where you have to get a little bit creative. You have to be able to signal to the switch to close, which means it's going to need power of some sort, and it's going to need some sort of communication system with whatever is switching it. And this is where this type of antenna meets its downfall. These switches are put in the part of an antenna that is at RF. It does not have uh, a DC continuity to the switch. Now you could do this in some form, but then you'd have to add reactive elements to keep the RF out of the switch and you're back to why don't you just build the trap. Uh, another way that you could do it if they had their own power source, like small solar panels with batteries, um, then you could send an RF signal down the line, which could just be in the form of pulses, and the, each switch could count the number of pulses and determine whether it's, it's time to turn on or turn off. Or you could find a way to take the RF power and uh, keep a little bit of it, rectify it, have it charge a capacitor which could then, or battery, which could then be used to do the switching where it senses the signal. Now the problem, of course, if you're transmitting Morse or RIDI, or FT8 or uh, PSK31, you're already outputting pulsed signals. So this would be a real bear to devise. Now, because of these drawbacks that we've seen, the inability to get a DC circuit out half of the dipole or the other half of the dipole to the switch itself to make it switch, uh, is going to be expensive, clumsy, and requires some serious engineering and is going to end up costing you far more than just putting in the trap. The trap consists of a coil and wound with magnet wire and in some cases a high voltage capacitor. Depends on how you want to do it. The antennas that I've seen with traps, the manufacturers don't want to bother with the capacitor, so they put enough windings 
in the coil that the inter-element capacitance adds up to be enough to make the trap work. Okay, so this is the end result of uh, working on something that has active switching uh, in uh, the system. You could also do this with transistors, but uh, you'd be limited to the amount of power that you could be transmitting because uh, RF transistors that can handle the current that we're talking about are expensive, although the closer you get to the end of the antenna, the less the current there is. So, Andrew, I would say at this point in the state of the art, you'd be better off putting traps. Or, better yet, build a fan dipole. Now, if you go back um, a few, a couple months in uh, the Ask Dave videos, you'll find the video on how we built a multi-band inverted V uh, using a technique of holding the elements apart. It was designed for 40, 20, and 10, okay? And by virtue of the way it's put together, 15 comes along for free because it's three halves wavelength of the 40 meter frequency. You can take a look at that. That's a pretty low loss antenna. We don't have the trap loss there. So try something like that. You'll find it's less expensive, less frustrating. However, if you're kind of a Rube Goldberg person, maybe you just want to make one to see if it can be done. If you do, send me pictures. So there you have it. If you would like to see how to uh, support this channel, hang on for a moment and uh, also take a look at the patrons and supporters that we have now. Until we next meet, 73.